Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing four Dollar Tree farmhouse winter DIYs. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay friends, I am so happy to be back and to my normal programming. This is my first like real DIY in my shed, so I'm definitely excited to be back. So let's get started. So I take this little house from Dollar Tree and I started by just pushing around the edge to get it loose and then I take my knife and I just run it along the back edge so that way we can separate the backing from the frame. Once I cut it then I just gently pull it off and the paper literally just comes right off of here. And then because this is just a piece of paper attached to the back, sometimes you just have to take your knife and clean up the edges, which is what I'm doing here. So once I had the edges cleaned up, then I take the sticker off of the back of this because that's what we're going to paint on. And then I take my finger sander and I sand down the sticky part. Now my finger sander is in the description box i actually did a amazon storefront that way when you guys click the link you can actually see the pictures of what i'm talking about rather than just a list of products because i always get questions you know where is it at how can i find the link so i figured that would just be easier for you guys so anyway i gave that a not a great coat but I like to do just a messy coat of paint because it makes it look like weathered wood so I gave it a messy coat of white Waverly chalk paint and then I took my Arteza graphite paper and I transferred on this little image I went to Google I typed in winter decor and then this sign came up that you could purchase so I just copied the image into word i resized it and then i printed it off so after i transferred that on then i took my black arteza paint pen and i went over that wording i set that aside and i have a bunch of scraps from different projects so this is a scrap from a large stir stick the handle so i pulled that out i sanded down the edges as well as i drilled a hole at the top because I want this to kind of look like a handle and then I set that aside as well. So once I sanded that down and drilled the hole then of course you know I have to vacuum up my workspace because that kind of stuff just drives me nuts and then I took this piece of scrapbook paper that actually one of my beautiful subscribers sent me if you guys ever want to send me a card or a letter my p.o box information is in the description box but i just cut that down to the size that i wanted it and then when we put my cube organizers together for my shed i didn't want those cardboard pieces uh, nailed to the back of the cube organizers so i just kept them full well knowing i could use them for something so I trace the scrapbook paper onto this piece of cardboard, I guess you want to call it. I don't really know what it is. MDF board. I don't know. Something. <laughs> anyway, I trace it down and then I take my hobby kit from Arteza. And this has all kinds of different sizes of utility knives in it. And I love the big one that comes with a handle. It just makes it feel so much better and you have like more control but anyway I took that out and then I cut that square out once I had that cut out then I take my square dowels which are also in my Amazon favorites I measure out a frame and then I take my mini miter saw which once again is in my Amazon favorites which is my storefront and I cut those out. I love this little mini saw because it's just so easy to pull out real quick, cut these down, and then put it back. You can use it right on your desktop, and it really doesn't make very much dust. So that's probably my favorite part. But I can cut two of these at a time. So I cut them down, and then I 
uh, took the other pieces that I had already cut off and I just measured that and cut them once again. Next, I just clean up any of the edges that were kind of frayed on the ends of this piece of cardboard. And then I take my disappearing purple glue stick and I glue right onto that. I then just take my scrapbook paper and I lay it on there and then smooth it out. Now you can use Mod Podge or spray adhesive, whatever you have on hand and whatever your preference is, but I just personally love glue sticks because you get a nice smooth finish and it does hold really, really well. Next, I take the pieces that I had just cut and I take my finger sander and sand down those edges. Sometimes when you cut with this little sander or this little saw, um, the edges are have little splinters on them. Not too bad, but um, I always like to get rid of those. That way they butt up against each other really nicely. I then lay all my pieces out. Now, I wanted this to be like a little... Dollar Tree farmhouse winter display so I did want all the wood to match I took my barrel brown rust-oleum stain from I believe I got it at Walmart and I just go ahead and stain all of the pieces of wood on each piece like the handle the frame for the buffalo plaid or whatever you want to call that. I don't really know what that's called. Somebody let me know in the comments down below what the pattern on the scrapbook paper is called. But I do just take a dabber to do this. Sometimes I use paper towel. Sometimes I use a dabber. It's really just what I have within arm's reach. So I then cut up this snowflake transfer from Chalk Couture. Um, the Chalk Couture information is in the description box as well. And then I pick out the snowflakes that I want. And that's what I love about Chalk Couture. It's so easy, you guys. It literally takes like five minutes to transfer whatever you want. If, it's, if you're using just one transfer, it's even less time. So I started in the corner and I didn't want the entire snowflake on there. So I just laid it where I wanted and then kind of ran my nail across the edges so that way I could chalk as close to the edge as possible. I then just took the other snowflakes and kind of randomly just transferred them on. And I did use uh, white chalk paste as well as, I believe this is called Shimmer. Um, I'll leave it in the description box. I don't, I don't know right off the top of my head right now. So I'm just going to let this play because everybody always says how satisfying it is to see these transferred on and personally I love to watch it as well. So um, like I said I just randomly put them and chose the color as I went. Once I was done chalking, then I took this little handle and some hot glue and I just glued that right down to the top. Okay friends, so I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people to explore new skills, deepen passions you may already have, and get lost in creativity. Right now I'm currently taking a few courses like 
watercoloring, and hand lettering essentials for beginners. My favorite is the hand lettering essentials for beginners with Mary Kate McDevitt because I have been wanting to learn hand lettering for so long that way I don't have to print off my stuff and then trace it on and I really love that the classes are short and to the point with interactive content so that you get a one-on-one -on -one with experience and you really feel like you know the teacher teaching you. You can do these classes in your spare time or you can do them one right after the other. I like to take like one course per day and I have found that it really helps me with trying to do hand lettering. So Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. There are no ads and they're consistently adding new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Plus, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, and I thought that you guys might want to know that if you click the link in my description box, if you click the title of the video, a box will appear. That is the description box. The first thousand people to click that link will get a free premium trial. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Moving on, we're going to take the backing to this little house and then just glue that together with some hot glue. Next, I take the frame pieces and I just glue the frame down with some hot glue right to this uh, scrapbook paper. Now, I always start with one of the ends and then I work my way up. So I do the end and then I do the sides and then I do the last end just so that I can be sure that all the pieces are going to fit together nicely and evenly. That way, if they don't fit together nicely and evenly, then I can fix it and there's not a gap in the frame. So if you guys are new here, my name is Melissa and I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs, farmhouse decor, and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love it if you would stick around by clicking the red subscribe button and then tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it and share it with your family and friends if you think they would enjoy it too because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow. So why not click the red subscribe button become part of the family because I can see that most of you watch but you don't subscribe. Okay guys, so I was finished these projects and then of course I was like, Oh my goodness, I have to dry brush. Duh, I forgot that step. So I just take them all and I take my mini chip brush and I give them a really nice coat of dry brushing all the way around each piece.
So once we're, I got done dry brushing everything, then I take this uh, cardstock from Dollar Tree and I pull one piece out. I had these wooden deer, I had this wooden deer from last year that I really love it, but I don't want to, you know, paint over it. I kind of want to just keep it for a template because I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to get a deer that looks like this but it's just not wood and you'll never be able to tell that it's actually cardstock so because I have this deer I just traced it on but if you go to your computer and just print out any standing deer that you like and that you want to display just print it out and then uh, trace it onto a piece of cardstock of your choice once I had it all traced on, then I fold it in half and then I cut it out. Once I cut it out, then once again, I took my glue stick and I glued them together. I also pulled another piece of a stir stick out of my scrap pile. If you don't have any scraps, you can use Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks. You can use a Pops, a large, somebody corrected me and told me that they were tongue depressors, but they're really large craft sticks, tongue depressors, whatever you like to call it. Um, but I usually just say large popsicle stick because that's what it looks like to me. But large craft stick, you can use anything you really have on hand that will help you stand this up. Next, I take some white Waverly chalk paint and I just give that scrap piece of star stick a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I do give the sides as well as the top a coat but I did not do the bottom just because you're not going to see it but if you want to you can. So I wanted to show you guys these little brushes. When I was putting together my Amazon store I was searching for the chip brushes for you guys and they don't have them on Amazon but I did find these so I figured that I would try them out on camera with you guys to see if they're similar or if they're not so good so I was actually pleasantly surprised I think that because the handles are short the bristles are stronger I don't know why but any other chip brush that I've ever used with a longer handle and longer bristles it just doesn't give you the same effect because the bristles are just soft so anyway i know that was kind of random but i just wanted to explain that to you guys so i have to say that i do love my apple barrel ones the best they win above all but these are definitely a good alternative if you cannot get your hand on those hands on those so anyway surprise surprise i dry brush some i believe that that was fawn onto the deer all the way around him and then I do dry brush the bottom piece with the fawn as well and then I take my ink Waverly chalk paint and just do the same exact thing I just like the way that it looks with both colors if you don't like that look then you can leave the dry brushing out altogether or just do a little bit as usual it is totally up to you Next, I take a skewer that I got from Dollar Tree last year when all the like grilling stuff was out and I just take the piece and measure it on the legs and I'm doing this because 
if you just try to glue this piece of cardstock straight to that bottom piece I was afraid that it would just fall over so this is going to kind of give it some stability so for the back legs I just do smaller pieces and then for the front legs I do a little bit longer pieces that kind of go up into the body so like I said that way it just gives it some stability and then once I have all my pieces measured and cut then I just glue those down with some hot glue. is going to hold the deer up after that then I just flip this over and I just reinforce it with some hot glue and then that was it for this you guys I cannot believe that this is cardstock when it is sitting up it looks so real like it's a piece of wood and that I just painted over it so I'm so happy with the way it turned out I know you'll let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite or if you just like the whole display all together. I didn't really have much winter decor and I was asked to do this video so if you asked me in the comments to do a winter farmhouse Dollar Tree DIY video here you go and I am so in love with the way everything turned out. I think that it really looks cool all together and it just looks so cohesive and I am so happy that I decided to do this. If you haven't give this video a big thumbs up already, I would love it if you would. Those thumbs up really help my channel to grow. Also, if you share it, that helps my channel out as well. And just being here, helps me out so I appreciate every single one of you if nobody has told you today you are gorgeous you are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul and I cannot wait to see what this year brings for us as a family so if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to click that subscribe button and then ring the bell and I will catch you guys in the next one bye